travel paid for by Nintendo. I know it sounds silly, but I went into the Nintendo Switch Lite hands-on event kind of hoping that I'd hate it. Because it's $200, I already have a Switch, I definitely plan on getting one, but I haven't pre-ordered yet, so there's still time to turn back. And then I get to the event, I go in there, I see the freaking colors, and they're so vibrant, and they're so cool looking, instantly I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna love it. But I'm going to wait because I have to play it, see how it feels. Maybe it's light. Maybe it's crappy. Maybe the sticks don't feel right. Maybe the form factor's off. And then I grab the Switch Lite. And then I think to myself, could this be the best way to play Nintendo Switch? <sighs> I just got back from playing the Switch Lite. And I wish I could have taken it with me because that little console... That little handheld, how are we officially calling this? Is it, is it a console? Is it a hand? It, it's a portable. It's a Nintendo Switch Lite, and it really feels great. The build quality is absolutely fantastic, and there are so many elements of the Switch Lite that oddly feel like a refinement over the Switch, even though technically it is the cheaper little brother of the big boy OG Switch. Let's get the obvious out of the way right from the get-go this is indeed a lesser switch. It doesn't switch, and it doesn't dock, and it doesn't have a kickstand, and multiplayer is gonna be tricky, and some games require additional controllers like Super Mario Party, so yes, it is a lesser switch. But, if you love handheld mode, and if you play your switch that way, more often than docked, this might be the one for you. Concerns with a system like this are its weight, its build quality, does it feel nice to hold? Is it flimsy? What are the buttons like? And I've got answers for all of that. The Switch Lite is a joy to hold because it has such solid construction. It feels like it's the perfect weight and an awesomely ergonomic form factor. Now granted, I've got kind of small hands, so maybe I'm a little biased to the fact that it's a bit smaller, but the screen does not suffer all that much. I was surprised to see how comparable the screen seemed to the original Switch. It's a 5.5 inch versus the 6.2 you get on the OG Switch, and it's really hard to notice as much as you might think. What is immediately noticeable though, is that this is a step up for the Switch in terms of handheld play. And I'm gonna stop making that caveat because we all know that the Switch Lite only does handheld play, so it's kind of silly to keep saying it, but for handheld play, this feels like an evolution. I like that now the Joy-Con are fully attached to the system. It loses some of that flimsiness, some of those creaks that you experience with the Switch. That tiny bit of bendability that happens because the Joy-Con can come off, it's gone. And now you have a much sturdier, solid system that I feel is the perfect size. I really loved it. It only bothered me form factor wise in one specific way. And that was the D-pad, ironically. I really like the D-pad, I'm glad it's there. It's a nice touch for those of us who have been waiting for a true D-pad. But the placement of the D-pad, given the shrunk form factor, sometimes my finger would move nervously close to the screen and I don't like having any overlap whatsoever, even 1%. So I wish the D-pad was a little bit further away, but everything else about the system in terms of size feels phenomenal. And those colors, man, goodness gracious, they made great choices. I don't know who's getting the gray. I guess it's an okay choice if you like that sort of thing, but that turquoise and that yellow are freaking hot. We talked at the event that it's kind of like a mango popsicle and a blue lagoon slushy. Like these colors really pop. And I love the fact that the bezel now bears the color of the system. To me, the black bezel around the original Switch screen is kind of distracting. Now, that might just be a personal preference because I've seen some people say that they think the colored bezel is more distracting than the more subtle black bezel, but to me, it makes the system just look a little bit better. I think it makes the screen pop a little more since it contrasts so heavily with the color, and I just like it seeming like there's a smaller bezel because it blends better into the system. The joysticks feel identical, the triggers feel identical. It's the buttons that surprised me because the ABXY buttons on the Switch Lite, they're not the same buttons as we have on the Joy-Con, which is weird because you'd think they would have just replicated 
everything, but these are squishier buttons. These are buttons more akin to what you'd find on the Pro Controller or even back on an older Nintendo handheld. They're not the clicky clacky buttons that the Joy-Con have. And I don't know that it's a bad thing. In some ways I prefer the squishier buttons, but it just felt weird because anytime I've ever played Switch in handheld mode, I've got the clicky buttons of the Joy-Con. So to click these buttons and not get that click, it was just like a weird negative Pavlov's dog response where I didn't get the feedback I was expecting and because of that, it felt really odd. That one's gonna come down to individual likes and dislikes, but know that it's not a bad thing and the rest of the buttons and sticks feel exactly the same. I've been playing Switch since day one and in those early times, the fact that we were playing full AAA titles on a handheld was remarkable. And over time, that feeling has kind of started to wear off. But the Switch Lite brings it back because now it's an even smaller form factor and yet you're still playing Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Mario Odyssey, Mario Maker 2, Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion 3, Astral Chain, all on an even smaller, cuter, more colorful, better built system, which brings those feelings right back and kind of got me super excited to play even more Switch. Gyro is there and it's incorporated very well. I was able to aim Link's bow perfectly. It doesn't feel like there's any disconnect and it's kind of surprising how naturally you're able to just take this handheld, move it around and get the same gyro you would have gotten from the original Switch, from the Pro Controller. It's just all here even though the form factor has changed and even though the price has dropped. I think that's a great example of why in some ways this does feel like a refinement because all the things you've come to know about the Switch are there. It is a natural progression to the Switch Lite. And even though it's a regression in terms of feature sets, because of the better build quality and for me the better form factor, it does feel like a step up in a lot of ways. It definitely shouldn't be the selling point of the system, but holy moly, I can't tell you enough how great those colors are. And thank goodness they are great because you're not gonna be able to swap on any Joy-Con or really swap on anything. So the color you pick is the color you get. So make that choice wisely. And I really recommend the turquoise, but the yellow is growing on me. You see, I love blue and I thought that was gonna be the home run hit for sure. But that mango popsicle, mm, I took a lick and it was yummy. So here we get to the tough part because this is the biggest Nintendo conundrum of 2019. The reasons that the Switch Lite is awesome are also the reasons why it is a lesser system. So I love the form factor, the fact that it's smaller, it fits better in my hands, it feels sturdier, more stable, it's a cohesive unit because the Joy-Con can't pop off. And at the same time, the reason for that is because this is a handheld only system and you lose the switch ability, the dock ability of the switch. I'm in love with the colors. They're so vibrant and they pop so nicely. Nintendo made great choices here and I'm a big fan of the bezel that now bears the same tone as the system itself. But the reason we have that is because there's no detachable Joy-Con and you can't swap out controllers nor really play multiplayer all that easily. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can confidently say this is my preferred way to play Switch handheld and it's gonna be great to take with you. Plus it is a cheaper price, 200 bucks, it's $100 off. But all of that is because it's missing the main thing that makes the Switch a hybrid console. Man, Nintendo is just so darn good at stuff like this, where they walk that line so carefully, like they make you want it, they make you crave it, they make improvements and refinements, but they also take stuff away. And so you have this tough decision to make if you're going to be that Nintendo crazy that gets everything, if you need it because it does something so darn well and looks real pretty while doing said thing, or if you can skip out because technically it's a step back in many ways, but also it's a step forward and it feels awesome and if you hold one, you're gonna need to buy it. Darn you, Nintendo. Cause I'm like, I don't need a Switch Lite. My Switch feels good, I'm so happy with it. I've been playing so much lately. The eShop is rocking. The AAA titles are on their way and have been coming for the whole summer. You go and see the Switch Lite and you're like, take my 200 bucks, it's over, I'm sunk. So here we are, what is the verdict? Well, if you don't have a Switch and you're someone that is looking to replace your 3DS and you prefer portable play, you're gonna be traveling a lot on the go, on the train, in bed, at the doctor's office, and you want something to take with you, well then the Switch Lite is absolutely the answer. 
because the build quality is superior. And in a lot of ways, it does feel like one of those DS era iterations where the thing gets a whole lot sleeker and cooler as they move to the next unit. If you already have a Switch and you don't play it docked, well, this one has better battery life, really cool colors, and again, that form factor feels killer. So maybe it is worth making the swap, especially because it's not more expensive. You'll be able to trade your Switch, get the Switch Lite, and probably have some bucks left over. That's not too bad of a proposition. But if you like docked play, and local multiplayer is a part of your regular schedule, if you're someone that likes flexibility and options, or man, if you're just someone that already has a Switch and you use it in a variety of ways, you don't need the Switch Lite. It's really freaking cool. It's gonna be really hard at $200 to keep me away from this thing because it does feel so good and I play handheld a lot now. That's like my main way of play. But if we're really honest, this is not a need. It's just a cool alternative and one that really does feel good and has nice colors. And I'm gonna get one, guys. I'm gonna get one. I love it. It fits for me. It's the best darn handheld machine I've ever held. I look back to my history of Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, the new 3DS, the XL, the lights, the DSIs, the 2DS, the 2DS XL. This is the ultimate. It loses out on a lot. It really does. You're missing the switchability. You're missing docked play. Multiplayer will be a bit of a pain, even though I kind of managed to make tabletop light mode work with Joy-Con and Pro Controller, and you could pull it off if you're not so picky. I kind of wish Nintendo would have just let this thing be dockable. Not include a dock or anything like that, but just allow it to work with the docks you may already have. I know that kind of defeats the purpose of the pillars they're trying to establish here with a home console hybrid and a dedicated portable that share the same library, but it's just a pipe dream. This thing would be absolutely undeniable if it did have the dockable option. In some ways, this feels like the best way to experience Switch games. In some ways, it feels like a total refinement, a true step forward for the form factor, but it also loses what makes the Switch the Switch. So let me know your take in the comments down below. Now that you've seen a bunch of the system and heard what it's like to play, are you going to pick one up? And I'm super curious, tell me your situation. Are you someone that has a Switch and might be making the Switch over? Are you just getting an extra because you're a huge Nintendo fan? Or are you a first time buyer looking to decide between the $200 and the $300? Super curious, so give me all your feedback in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Hope you had fun as I brought you along my adventure to check out the Switch Lite. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and the Switch Lite, which is now right around the corner. It'll be super cool to see over an extended period of time how this thing fits in to my gaming lifestyle. And I am sorry for those of you that were hoping this thing sucked. If I sold you on a Switch Lite and you were trying to stay away, you have my apology, and I hope you can forgive me. But for now, we're gonna go. You can check out my Switch Lite tabletop light mode video. I'll put a link in the description below. That was super interesting to see how other controllers connected and what that experience was like. Turn on the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when cool new stuff drops. And until next time, thanks again, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Switch Force!